Hi everybody, welcome to Kalinting Reads, where we talk about books in the horror genre, or at least horror adjacent. My name is Dimas, and I am your host. Now, you might be asking, why horror? Well, because I just love this genre so much. I have loved horror movies since I was a kid. It is the genre that always piqued my interest whenever I go to a video store or bookstore or browse online in search of a movie to watch or a book to read. I started doing book review videos this year because since the pandemic happened, I work mostly from home and basically don't go outside that much. So I figured I might as well use this time to read whatever book I have and do reviews on them as a reminder for myself in the future as to the number of books and the kinds of books that I have read during this bizarre time. Now, today, I'm going to review a horror novel called Naomi's Room by Jonathan Aycliff. As usual, I hope I'm saying his name right. If not, then my apologies to the author. I picked this novel to read because I heard great things about it from a number of booktubers, that this book, on the surface, may seem like a typical creepy ghost story, but once you peel away the outer layers, you will find very shocking, very disturbing and violent scenes that will linger on your mind long after you flip the last page. Now, Naomi's room tells us about a college academic named Charles who resided in Cambridge, England, who, at the start of the story, we find him as an aging man. He seems to be living alone in a big house, and yet he constantly hears noises, a voice calling out his name, and old photographs that seem to materialize out of thin air. It is clear that even if he is the only human in the house, he is not alone. Something is terrorizing him. Something is haunting him. And that something relates to a grisly incident that happened 20 years ago. Now, 20 years ago, in the year 1970, Charles had everything. A thriving career at a prestigious university, a luxurious new house, a happy and loving marriage to his wife Laura, and a beautiful daughter named Naomi, who was four at the time. On a cold winter day, just before Christmas, Charles and Naomi set off to London to do some Christmas shopping. After having lunch together, Charles took Naomi to a toy store. Since it was Christmas Eve, the store was crowded with people. They stayed there for a little while, going from one counter to the next, seeing the wonderful and magical toys on display. Charles himself seemed to be enjoying it as well, to the point that he suddenly realized that Naomi was not by his side anymore. The little girl just vanished into thin air. In the very harrowing hours that followed, we saw Charles searching through the store for his missing child. He asked for help from the store assistant to the store manager, all of whom assured him that he did not have to worry. They said that these sort of things happen in the store every day and that more often than not, they would eventually find the child crying in the corner somewhere in the store. However, as the day grew late and all the customers have gone home, it was clear that Naomi was not coming back. Charles went to the nearby police station, filed a report, and then called his wife to tell her about what happened. These sequences were written so brilliantly that you can feel Charles' devastation and guilt. Not long after Naomi was declared missing, right on Christmas Day, Charles received news that no parents wants to hear. Naomi was found dead in an alley near Spitalfields Market. Her body was savagely mutilated and was in a really bad shape. An investigation soon commenced to find the killer. However, for me, the story got more exciting and even more creepy when Charles sort of teamed up with a local photographer named Lewis, who claimed to have seen the image of Naomi on the photographs that he took, even though the photographs were taken after the girl was reported to be dead. Now, weird and ghostly photographs are not the only things that happened in the wake of Naomi's death. Since the incident, both Charles and Laura have been haunted by something sinister in their house. They have been hearing screams and footsteps from the attic in the middle of the night. All of that was then followed by a series of mysterious deaths that happened to the people who were involved in Naomi's case. 
Is it possible that Naomi's killer is now targeting Charles and Laura to prevent them from knowing the truth? Is Naomi's ghost trying to warn her parents of the impending doom that awaits? Or is there something else more sinister at play? I have to say that this book is indeed very creepy. The author has effectively created a dark and foreboding atmosphere that you can feel that something really, really bad is just lurking in the corner waiting to befall our main characters. This uncomfortable atmosphere is created by using slow burn suggestive scares such as ghostly sightings on photographs, footsteps, and whispers from an empty house, and horrible tragedies recorded on old newspaper articles and journals. I love it when a horror book or a horror movie managed to get under my skin by simply suggesting that something is off, that something is not quite right without ever showing what that something is until the last possible moment. Now, the book Naomi's Room did just that. It made me forgot the world around me when I was reading it, and yet, at the same time, it made me even more alert of any sounds that might come up around the house. It made me unwilling to venture outside my room when I was reading it late at night. And because of that, I think this book has done its job perfectly as a horror story. A word of caution though, there are scenes involving child abuse in this one, so proceed with caution. If you expect the book to be a ghost story that entirely relies on creepy atmosphere and suggestive scares, I just have to warn you that the tone changes a little bit towards the ending. It becomes shockingly violent. For me, though, it adds to the surprise. Not every question is explained clearly when the book ends, but I like it that way. It adds to the haunting quality of the story. It really does stay on my mind after I finish reading. It was not a fun or cozy read by any means. It actually made me feel uneasy because of the subject matter. However, it is so elegantly written that I cannot help myself but to be hypnotized by the story. Even if parts of the story and some of the scare tactics reminded me of classic horror movies from the 70s. All in all, I give Naomi's Room by Jonathan A. Cliff a 5 out of 5 stars. I do think this is a must-read for anyone who loves a quiet, haunting, creepy, atmospheric ghost story. But beware of the ending, though, because it is shockingly violent. So that is my review of Naomi's Room by Jonathan A. Cliff. If you've read this book, let me know what you think of it. And if you have recommendations on any good ghost stories that I should read, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next book review video.